So controllers can be nested. Uh, to talk about why we want to do this, it's, it's fairly common to have multiple controllers in a single Angular application. You don't want to have one giant controller which contains all the logic. You want to break that down. So you have multiple controllers, and it's fairly common. So when you do have multiple controllers, it's also common that you have one controller inside another controller, and that still works. Angular does support nested controllers. But it also introduces a new kind of problems. You know, it's a different set of headaches, and I'll demonstrate what that headache is in a bit, and then I'll show you the solution for having managing those nested controllers. So I'm going to start by uh, taking this index.html. So I created a new directory here called nested controllers. So this is the standard index.html that we're already familiar with. It has ng app as nested controllers. And uh, I have two scripts. One is Angular, and one is app. And in app.js, I have angular.module nested controllers. Right? It's a simple Angular application. Now I can refresh the page. And it's essentially an empty HTML. It doesn't really do anything. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of controllers in my app.js. So I'm going to have uh, a controller1, which is pointing to a controller1 function, controller2, which is pointing to a controller2 function. I'm going to have a couple of controller functions over here, CTRL1 and CTRL2. They have the dollar $scope injected to them. Right. So what I'm going to do here is add a property on top of dollar scope. I'm going to say dollar scope dot test prop equals from CDRL one, and I'm going to have same thing for a message from CDRL two. Okay. Now I'm going to create two divs over here. Um, just so that I can have two ng controllers, right? I have a dev ng controller, CTRL1, CTRL2 as well. All right, so now I must tell you that there is one thing about scopes that I've been lying to you all along. Well, I wouldn't say lie, but there is a certain piece of information that I haven't revealed yet to facilitate your understanding of the concept of controllers. And basically what I've been telling you is that there is this scope object, which is the scope. There is a scope object in Angular, which is kind of like this shared space where all the variables are being maintained. But it turns out there's not just one scope object. It turns out that every time you have a controller, every time you're using an ng controller, Angular is actually creating a new scope object. So what's actually happening here is that the controller's scope, controller one scope, is different from controller to scope. Whenever there is a controller, Angular says, okay, I need to create a new scope object. It creates a new object and injects it. Controller two, again, it's a different controller. So there's a new scope object. It creates an object and injects it. So there is no one scope object. There are multiple scope objects. There is a new scope object for every controller. So in order to demonstrate this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this test prop be printed inside these controllers. So if I were to say, Paragraph ng bind equals test prop. I'm going to copy the same thing over here. And if I were to refresh, you see here I get two different values. There is this from controller one, there is this from controller two. So essentially, we are looking at two different properties of two entirely different objects. So this is the first scope dot test prop this is the second scope dot test prop all right so that's how this works every time you create an ng controller you're essentially asking angular to create a new scope and so when you have your controllers and you're saying hey angular inject scope for me by using this dollar scope in the first controller angular injects the scope that it created for controller one second controller angular injects the scope that it created for controller two so this dollar scope is a different object compared to this dollar scope, all right? So I hope that makes sense. This is something that confuses a lot of people who are new to Angular. When you have no controllers in your application, right? So when you did not have this, let's say to remove this stuff, and you use something like an ng init. Let's say I have a div ng init equals uh, test prop 
equals 10, for example, right? So I'm just creating a value and there are no ng controllers. This actually worked too. And I said that there is the scope object where this is getting populated. Now, what is a scope object when you don't have controllers? Because I told you that a controller is what causes a scope object to be created. Now here, there is no controller. So is there no scope object? Well, even if there are no controllers, there is a scope object and that's the global scope object. Whenever you have an ng app, you have a scope that comes with it. And that's called the root scope, okay? That's like the core basic scope object that you get out of the box when you have an ng application. What you do get by, by adding these controllers is you get separate scope objects for each controller, which is kind of handy because you get to limit the data to that controller, right? So let's say you have this section of HTML where you need to execute some business logic and show some value. You have another section of this HTML where you need to execute different business logic and show some different values. Doesn't make sense to put all the data into one object. It would be very inelegant. So having these separate objects actually makes sense. It actually makes things a little bit easier, right? You have one section where you have your own controller and it has its own model, which is the scope for that controller. You have another section with its own controller and model and view. It makes things easier to segregate. The challenge, however, is when you are not having these as separate sections and when they are actually nested. That's where things get a little bit tricky. Now, let's say I take this thing over here and uh, put this inside controller two. So I have controller, uh, sorry, controller two inside controller one. All right, so this is ng controller controller one. That's this block, all right? Inside this controller one, I have another div, just controller two. Now what would get displayed? Can you guess? So it still says from controller one, from controller two. So it seems to work like it did before. Now let me also make this other change. I'm gonna to go to the app.js and I'm gonna remove this line, right? I don't wanna set the test prop property of the controller one's scope. Now what's gonna get displayed? Well, this seems to work fine too. Since you've removed this test prop, the first ng bind would not have any value, right? This is not gonna show up. However, the second ng bind is gonna have the test prop from controller two. So this seems pretty obvious too. So I'm gonna put this back, this back so that we have them both here. Now the tricky part is, if I remove this line, if I remove the initialization for the second controller, remember the second controller is inside the first controller. If I were to remove this, well, guess what happens? It actually says from controller one. So what's actually happening here is when Angular was not able to find the value test prop in the inner controller, it's actually looking up to its parent. Since these controllers are nested, it actually forms a scope hierarchy. So the first controller, the outer controller, has its own scope. The inner controller has its own scope, of course. And what's happening over here is a scope hierarchy. The inner controller is a child of the outer controller. More accurately, the inner controller's scope is a child of the outer controller's scope. If the inner controller is accessing a value on the scope, a property on the scope, which exists, it's gonna get it. But if whatever the inner controller is accessing is not available in the inner scope, it actually goes to the parent's scope. Here, the parent is the outer controller with its outer scope object. So it's gonna look that up. And if that is available, then it's gonna get that, right? So that's what's happening here. It's actually doing a parent lookup. Since we removed the inner controller's test prop, it's actually looking up the parent. And the parent has the from controller one. So it's gonna take that and show it in the inner controller too. All right, so this is actually a little bit confusing because once you have this whole nested structure, right? So let's say you have three controllers or four controllers which are nested one inside another and you're looking up a property on a scope, it's very hard to figure out where it's looking it up from. Is it looking it up from the controller scope or maybe some parent's scope? Well, you never know. What in fact also happens is if you're looking up something from the inner controller and it doesn't find it, 
It only looks at the outer controller, right? Let's say it doesn't find it even there. It actually looks at the root scope. Okay, that's the like the last step where it checks. It keeps going up the scope hierarchy, and the root of that hierarchy is the root scope. And if it finds it in the root scope, it's going to get that. If it doesn't find it, only then does it not show anything, right? So uh, if it, this is too confusing, don't worry too much about it. Just realize that when you have nested controllers, you have nested scopes. You have a scope hierarchy. And whenever you look up something using ng-bind, it's not just looking at that scope. It's actually going to multiple levels. It's keep, it keeps going to up the scope hierarchy to see if there is any scope which has that property. When I started this video, I said that this is a headache and I wasn't kidding. When you have complex applications with multiple scopes and multiple controllers, it's going to be a pain to figure out where the value is coming from. So you can have some something like an ng-bind or an angular expression somewhere in the middle of your code. Imagine like a 500 line long HTML code, right? And you have this ng-bind over here, which is pulling up a property. And you open your HTML and you see that property being displayed. It's There's no way you can say for sure which scope object it's pulling the data from. There are some nice um, plugins for browsers which display the scope hierarchy, but it is actually painful. So in order to solve this problem, Angular introduced a new feature called controller as, and that's the recommended way of creating these multiple controllers, especially if you have a hierarchy. Uh, the controller as syntax is very popular now that people don't use this kind of syntax anymore, right? They don't use the ng controller equals controller name syntax. I'm going to demonstrate what that controller as syntax is in the next video, but it's safe enough to say that this kind of syntax is not recommended. So since this is not recommended, you don't have to worry too much about this kind of a hierarchical lookup. You shouldn't really be writing code, which makes it necessary for you to kind of debug the scope hierarchy. So see you in the next video where I show you a better way to write your controllers.